thank you for introduction and um, and thanks for all for coming and be here and the invitation from from Onkis groups and um, I want to talk about something about the use of epitopes against schistosomiasis and um, I'm sorry for the the words misused mis of these words is outline is correct and the schistomiasis in the word the use of epitopes, the importance of salvation of the epitopes, and the challenges that we have in the study of uh, the epitopes. So, um, the schistosomiasis in distribution in the world is restricted for this part of the world, but um, despite this, and um, they affect millions of people and have um, a huge impact in the social and the economic lives for these people. So the study of the schistosomiasis and the, any way that you can use to improve the, the immunization about this is important in my view. Because if you are diseased, it doesn't matter if the disease is named as neglected or uh, non-neglected diseases, it's important. So um, schistosomiasis have a uh, complex cycle of life and for me as a chemist, this is a nightmare because you can see any one stru chemical structure here. So it's a very complex for me. And um, among all these steps, I wish this stood the, present, the MHC epitope presentation. And um, this presentation starts when the MHC molecules, this stands for major is compatibility complex, is loaded with the epitopes, and these epitopes is this loaded MHC is transported, oh sorry, it's transported from here to here and present the MHC and the epitopes to a TCR complex. And um, I, I, uh, I start to study this loading process of the MHC molecule and uh, with the epitope and the transportation of the MHC molecule to the TCR complexes. Uh, but um, I'm sorry, but if you are uh, familiar with the Murphy's Law, you know what I mean. And um, the results about the interaction between MHC, MHC, what are the point? Sorry. The MHC and the TCR complex, um, I, can get, I can get back from the computer because the computer broke down. So um, I want to show some results that I can get back. The pit loading, here is the MHC molecule, uh, MHC class two molecule, and uh, formed by two of alices and eight bet, uh, beta sheets in the, the, the floor, and the pit is loaded in here in the extended conformation, and there are two different, uh, sorry, so, so two different ways to load it in the MHC. Let me see what the, sorry, this is not what the picture I want to show. Anyway, this is MHC class two, is a different from MHC class one because MHC class one um, does not have the ended opened. So you can load it only the epitopes constituted by eight or nine residues. And with the MHC class two, you have epitopes that can be constituted by 15 residues. So you have more chances to um, interaction. But um, there are here in this pocket, nine in, the, in this groove, nine pockets to interaction. and there are some key residues that must be present in this epitope to interact in the correct way. So we will use in, the, in, us, in, in our lab the bioinformaticus to choose the correct epitope and use the search of protect sequence in NCBI. And one of these runs we found out 295 hypothetical transmembrane protein because we want to use that, that, that protein 
that um, it is posed uh, to the, the DMHC. So we use the SAR2 um, software and uh, we selected the 68 TP proteins. Then we looking for the sinepitope predi prediction using this software and we find out 35 HP uh, to 25 proteins that have this sinepitope. And um, this shows the sinepitope here and not here. So we use another software to find out the correct prediction, the epitope that must be loaded into MHC, and only the proteins have the, uh, the positive response, uh, answer in with the three softwares we use. Um, okay. This other, uh, other software that we use to choose the epitopes and uh, we use the geometry optimization with amber molecule or amber um, for dynamic molecular dynamic simulation to run the optimization of geometry in the sense to find out uh, the, the minimum of the uh, energy geometry. So we, after that, we use the docking ligand to be inside. We use an auto dock Vina program, and uh, we run another another geometry optimization in sense to. To, to find the, the, the find a more stable geometry of the epitope and MHC and redocking without the dock vena and uh, calculate the electrostatic potential surface using the auto dock vena with the van der Waals radio of the atoms and we have some results here and the uh, in vitro results and the energy binding for the uh, docking procedures and we have here, and here, and here and these results in vitro. And it turns out that we have here the electrostatic potential of the MHC molecule and uh, we have the binding groove here and you can see the pockets here and we have here the bit of number five that have that has a mi minus 5.4 kilocal per mole and have this the, this value of the in vitro results and we can explain this low in vitro results because the interaction of the positive parts of here from here if you compare with this we can see that we have a negative part here interacting with the positive part here and the neg positive part here interact with the negative part here. So we can use this uh, methodology to choose epitopes that we can use against M uh, uh, schistosomiasis. But, um, no, this is no, sorry. We use uh, we run for uh, other other tests, and we show we find here two principal uh, two, two principal epitopes that have um, the better results in the um, immunization against schistosomiasis, and we can see that they don't folding other ones folding. You, so we can imagine that, as I said, the epitope must be loaded in the MHC molecule as a linear way. So uh, would drive me to the question, what is, what, what is the role of the solvation? How can I solvate these epitopes and study what's the importance of the solvation of the pit to study these epitopes and the interaction of epitopes with the MHC. Because um, if you want to, to do molecular dynamic simulation, you know that the time is important. The number of molecules is very 
large. To, to, to so the, the number of epitopes is large. And the molecular dynamic simulation, the time is large too. So if you solvate the mo these molecules like this, the water, on water box, the tip 3 t tip 3P model, and the 10 angstroms long for the center of mass, and you, you, you can use this other way to simulate and wh where you use a water shell, the same model for water, but three angstroms long, or you can use the vacuum mod, mode on where you don't use N molecule and solvation model at all. So what is the better? What what is the what matter in this solvation time, or the model of solvation? So you we can see here the RMS, the, the root mean square deviation of the molecule and the time. So the picoseconds, the uh, one nanosecond, and uh, we can see that the vacuum is not uh, show any confirmation, conformational change of the molecule. So uh, we think that is because the vacuum, that had, as you don't have any molecule, don't have any clashes between the molecule of water of the epitope. So it maintain, maintains the, the, the conformation. Here in the black, we have the implicit solvent model when you change the molecule, the water molecules for a mo uh, equation, the Poisson-Boltzmann equation for solvation, and you can see that the change of the structure and the so explicit, explicit solvent when you use the water, mo water box, you have the maintenance of the structure of the pit despite these uh, changes in the in early simulation time. So another thing, an another result, uh, RMSD for alpha carbons. Again, the vacuum is the stable. And so um, here, the explicit and implicit solvent is almost the same because um, the side chains of the pitops <laughs> is responsible for the depth change here. We'd observe it here. Another result that I can show you is the, the fluctuation of the residues. And again, the solvation, when, better, when you don't use any solvation model, you can see that there is no fluctuation of the structure of any of these residue. And the um, explicit solvent has the, the um, two principal changes in the uh, fluctuations in the first one and the last one residues. And, um, but the middle ones is stable. And uh, when you use implicit solvent, uh, the water shell and the uh, equation t uh, to simulate the to simulate the, the solvation, you can see that every every residue is fluctuate. So the question is, what what may, what model is better to simulate a pit and the molecular dynamic simulation? Well, it that depends on what time you have to searching for the structure, the more the more stable structure. If um, you want to spend more time, you can use the explicit solvent, but implicit solvent is a better choice too. Um, no rhetorical question. Um, I want to use, uh, um, um, I want to study the liquid, ionic liquids um, and use and study the solvation of the pitops with the ionic liquids. This ionic liquid is bemine and BF4 and um, is, composed, is composed by two parts, uh, a positive charged one and a negative charged one, and the interaction between these two parts with the epitope. And uh, the comparison with the water molecule model, and um, we, have here, we have here the radiation distribution function that shows us 
um, what is the structure of the molecules of the solvent around the epitopes. We can see, and you, uh, we use here 10 epitopes, that um, here is the water. We have, we have, we have here in the almost two uh, angstroms from the epitope. That there are um, a structure, molecules, <coughs> water molecules are structured around the epitopes. And no one structure observed around the, the epitopes. When it change to the BF4, we, ha we can see that are many, many structured ways in the, the BF4, and I think this is because the interaction of the, of the negative charge of the BF4 with the residues of the epitope. And uh, when I see, when, when we see, we change to BMI, we can see that there is no structured uh, molecules of the BMI around the epitopes. And the, 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 the reason that I was, uh, want to study the interaction between ionic liquids and uh, the interaction between ionic liquids and the, the, the epitopes is because um, if you want to build a vaccine against schistosomiasis, the, 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 um, we must keep this vaccine and storage this vaccine, you know? And uh, when you, the, the, the interaction between molecules, water molecules and epitopes, change the structure of the epitopes, as we can saw earlier, and uh, the folded structure of the epitopes cannot interact with the MHC. On the other hand, if you storage the epitopes with the ionic liquids, and we can see here, the structure of the epitopes is maintained along the time. And you can storage these epitopes and use later changing the ionic liquids for the water molecules and use the epitopes and, uh, as a, a vaccine. But it's uh, only the, the, the simulation yet. We don't run any um, experimental uh, studies until now. You can see here that the Again, RMICD, there is a lower value than here for water. And uh, uh, there's a mess of colors, but uh, you can see that the change of the structures is great in the simulation of 16 nanoseconds. And here, and ionic liquids, is the, the structures is maintained along the, all the simulation. Um, so, the conclusions. Um, the ESP surfaces can explain the interaction between ligand and receptor uh, uh, in this case at all. And um, the surfaces can be used as a tool in reverse vaccinology. And the uh, salvation is important to decrease the amount of the needed computation because it will, uh, again, if you want to use molecular dynamic simulation, you must be awarded by the time of simulation. This is a very important thing. And um, ionic liquids can be used as solvent to transport. And the challenge, uh, we need the development of a quick research and procedure to identify good epitopes and improve the understanding of the interaction of MHC class II and the TCR and improve the understanding of the role of the residual sequence of the epitopes and turn the neglected disease into important disease because, as I said, it doesn't matter if uh, the disease is named as neglected or not neglected. If you are sick, you don't matter if it's neglected or not neglected. So, um, thank you for your attention and sorry for my terrible English. Thank you very much indeed for the beautiful presentation. I come from Africa, Nigeria in particular, and schistosomiasis is quite a big problem. 
and I admire your presentation because of that. Um, you use quite a number of softwares in coming along with what you have presented. And of course, you've pointed some of the challenges. And I still feel, can you go a little bit deeper on the specific details? Because I have a feeling that um, if you use so many softwares in getting to something, and uh, each time you start with a different sof software, there is a peculiarity of that. And you are coming from another software to this particular one. So um, I would have appreciated if you give me two or three such detailed challenges that you met, that would be good. Uh, you mean the challenges? Yes, the challenges, the detailed challenges you face as you moved from one software to the other. Oh, OK. Yes. Um, first of all, um, the different f um, formats of these softwares. And you, you must do a lot of work to transform one format from software to another software. It's a very difficult task if you don't f are familiar of these softwares. And the second one is the time of the needed for the time needed for simulation, you know, and the the the, the space of the computer you need. And then when we run, when I run the, the simulation of the molecular dynamic simulations, um, there's a, a, a huge amount of space necessary to the interact to study the interaction between MHC and a pit and the, the loaded MHC with the TCR complexes because they are huge complexes. And uh, this is why I, I, I try to use another way to simulate, to solvate these this, this, this complexes. Because um, um, if I'm done wrong, I have uh, 150,000 atoms to simulate, and this is a huge amount of, the, of the, the, the atoms to simulate in molecular dynamics. Okay, this is true. Okay, the last speaker uh, this morning uh, is uh, Professor Concepcion uh, Gonzalez-Bello. Uh,